In this video, I'm going to introduce the term and the concept of myelopathy. Myelopathy. And the term myelo refers to the spinal cord. And myelopathy means dysfunction of the spinal cord. Dysfunction of the spinal cord. Now we can get all sorts of abnormalities with myelopathy. But some of the most obvious things involve three functions involving kind of three types of neuron axons that are running through the spinal cord. The first of these are the upper motor neurons. So we can get upper motor neuron abnormalities. Upper motor neuron. So recall that we have lower motor neurons in the spinal cord that are sending their axons out to innervate skeletal muscle cells to tell them when to contract. So let me just show that over here on our larger diagram of the spinal cord. Let me show some little lower motor neurons going out to both sides to innervate skeletal muscle cells. And then the neurons that are going to tell these neurons when to fire action potentials are the upper motor neurons. And they're going to start way up here in the brain, and then they're going to send long axons down that'll cross. And don't worry about the exact details of the crossing, but these neurons are going to tell the lower motor neurons when to tell the skeletal muscle cells when to contract. And they'll be coming down from both sides, and the upper motor neurons of one cerebral hemisphere will mainly control the muscles on the other side of the body because they cross over. So now hold that thought about the upper motor neurons, because the next type of abnormality we can get with myelopathy are somatosensory abnormalities. Somatosensory. Somatosensory. So recall that we talked about a few different tracks carrying different types of somatosensory information in the central nervous system. So let's just say over on this leg we'll look at a receptor, and I'll write an R for that, that can detect position of body parts, vibration, or fine touch. And then a neuron will carry that information back in the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system. So let me just draw that over here as a little arrow pointing in toward the central nervous system. And then that information is going to travel along neuron axons up to the brain. And it's also going to cross over, but don't worry about these crossing bits yet. And then that information will eventually reach an area of the cerebral cortex that's involved in somatosensory functions. And then let's say there's another receptor over here, I'll just write an R for that, that can detect pain or temperature or gross touch. And that information will travel along neurons in the peripheral nervous system. Let me just draw that as a little arrow over here. And then that information will take a little different path, but don't worry about the exact path now. But it's also going to go up to the brain and eventually get that information to that somatosensory area of the cerebral cortex. And these two types of tracks carrying these different types of somatosensory information are going to be on both sides. But eventually all the somatosensory information from one side is going to cross over to the other side of the brain because of the way these tracks travel through the central nervous system. But hold that thought too, because we also have autonomic neurons that send axons through the peripheral nervous system to structures like the urinary bladder and lots of other structures like the rectum and the anus. And these neurons also are controlled by neurons that start somewhere in the brain, and don't worry about the details of this yet, but these also send axons down the spinal cord to control these neurons, these autonomic neurons that are doing all these different functions. So with a myelopathy, you can also get autonomic abnormalities. Autonomic. So there are lots of different things traveling up and down through the spinal cord, connecting the brain up here with the peripheral nervous system that's heading out through spinal nerves into the limbs and the trunk. So what might a myelopathy syndrome look like if there was dysfunction of the spinal cord? Well, let's take, for example, some kind of lesion, some kind of abnormality or injury about halfway up the spinal cord. Let's say right around here, there's a problem that's causing dysfunction of all these neuron axons carrying information down from the brain and, or up to the brain. What kind of syndrome would we see with this? Well, we have upper motor neurons trying to get down through this part of the spinal cord. And if these upper motor neurons can't get past this area of dysfunction, they can't communicate information to the lower motor neurons. So what we can see are upper motor neuron abnormalities everywhere below the level of the spinal cord that has the, the abnormality. So if we're about halfway up the spinal cord, that would mean we'd be able to draw a line across a person about halfway up on both the front and the back. 
and below that line we could have upper motor neuron abnormalities. We could have weakness and or the upper motor neuron signs. And recall that includes spasticity, hyperreflexia, clonus, and the extensor plantar response. Now since both types of somatosensory tracts trying to carry those different types of somatosensory information aren't able to carry that information past this area of dysfunction, we can also see somatosensory abnormalities everywhere below the part of the body that corresponds to that level of the spinal cord. And if both of those types of somatosensory tracts are involved, then we could see loss of all the modalities of somatosensation, all those different types of somatosensory functions. So there could be abnormalities of gross and fine touch, position sense, vibration sense, pain sense, and temperature sense, everywhere below that area of dysfunction of the spinal cord. Now with involvement of these neuron axons that are controlling these autonomic neurons, you could get all sorts of different autonomic abnormalities. But the big ones we tend to see with myelopathy is abnormalities of control of the bladder and the bowels. Let me just draw some yellow circles here to represent abnormalities controlling the bladder and bowels. So these patients will often have incontinence. They won't be able to control when they release their urine or when they release their stool. So as you can see with the way I've drawn this, you can get lots of different abnormalities of basically the lower half of the body with a myelopathy that involves the spinal cord about halfway up but you wouldn't have any abnormalities of the face or the rest of the head or the upper part of the body, including the arms, because the upper part of the spinal cord is fine, including all those neuron axons that are send for sending information out to the arms or bringing the information back from the arms. But if we had a myelopathy that was higher up, way high up in the neck here, above where all those neuron axons are coming in and out for the arms, then we could get everything we get here with a myelopathy lower down in the spinal cord, and we could get all these abnormalities involving the arms and the upper part of the trunk as well. Basically everywhere below wherever that level of myelopathy is, and that would be on both the front and the back. And the spinal cord is a pretty small structure, so we usually see that the entire spinal cord is involved at the level of dysfunction, both sides and both the front and the back. So you could have the upper motor neuron abnormalities from the neck on down, and you can also have the somatosensory and autonomic abnormalities from the neck on down. So let me just finish drawing that in here with this cyan color to represent that you, have you can have loss of all the somatosensory modalities, as well as the red color for the upper motor neuron abnormalities. So there's a lot more detail to uh, the different myelopathy syndromes, but I just want to introduce the term myelopathy and the concept of dysfunction of the spinal cord and that these are the big categories of abnormalities we can have because these neuron axons carrying information about these types of functions would have to pass through an area of injury or dysfunction that'll disrupt those functions to the parts of the body that are below that area of abnormality.